If you want to move to the UK, your life is going to get considerably more difficult, but your wallet is going to get considerably a lot lighter. And that's what we discussed in our previous video a few days ago. Today, we're discussing the new set of announcements made by the government. And if you plan on moving to the UK, we're also discussing how they're going to affect you and by how much. Without wasting any time, I'm Ashika. And on this channel, we talk about moving to the UK and a lot of other countries. With that, let's dive in. For those of you who missed the last updates, let me give you a quick recap. The visa fees are going to get a lot higher for people who plan on applying for visas to move to the UK. The IHS or the NHS surcharge to get healthcare in the UK are also going to get a lot higher if you plan on applying and this cost is separate from your visa expense. So effectively, if you plan on moving to the UK, this is going to increase your cost by quite a bit. If you're already in the UK and you plan on switching visas, this will impact you too. And if you're wondering where all this money is going to go, all of the extra money that is collected from visas is going to go towards paying hikes to all of the employees in the public sector in the UK and hopefully it would mean the end of strikes in the UK. Now I want to talk to you about the visa fees for a little while longer and tell you by how much they're going to increase and what you should expect. But before that, another announcement just came in and it's a big one. Universities that offer low quality courses to students are officially going to be made to reduce or limit the number of students that they offer these courses to. Now, if you're wondering what a low quality course is, you're not alone because very honestly, who's to decide what a low quality course is? And on what basis do you decide that, right? Well, they're typically looking at courses which do not have good outcomes. But if you're looking to define it, this is what the Office of Students will probably look at. Courses that have high dropout rates or have a low proportion of students going into professional jobs. It will also look into potential earnings when deciding if a degree offers enough value. Now, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said that the UK is home to some of the best universities in the world and studying for a degree can be immensely rewarding. But too many young people are being sold a false dream and end up doing poor quality coursework at the taxpayer's expense and that doesn't offer the prospect of a decent job at the end of it. Now something else for you to know is that nearly 3 in 10 graduates do not progress into highly skilled jobs or further study 15 months after graduating according to the OFS. They also estimate that 1 in 5 graduates would be better off financially if they hadn't gone to university. So what the government is basically looking to do is ensure that students and taxpayers are protected against low ripoff courses which have high dropout rates, which don't give you the prospect of getting a good job at the end of it and then ends up with students and other taxpayers with huge financial burdens, cost poor pay. Now if you're wondering how this affects you, here's the thing. If these courses are now limited in terms of students, it also means that the universities are losing avenues for revenue, which means that the courses that you're considering might get a little more expensive so that the universities remain profitable. It also means that if you had an interest in a niche course and you may or may not have had plans of working in the UK, maybe that niche course has a brilliant future in some other country, or maybe you were just studying this niche course because you had an interest in it, but the UK government probably doesn't think you should be doing that. So you might be restricted in terms of how many students can actually get into this course, which obviously then reduces your chances. But at the moment, these are the challenges I see. The OFS has still not clarified which courses will be deemed as low quality courses, how many students would be allowed to attend these courses, when these changes would effectively come into place, and what happens to you if you're already in the UK studying a course that is deemed a low quality course? Would you be asked to switch to a different course? In another update, the government is also now reducing the maximum fee that can be charged for classroom-based foundation courses. It's going to go down from 9,250 to 5,760. And just in case you didn't know what foundation year courses are, let me give you an idea. Foundation courses are basically an additional year of study designed to help students prepare for various degrees with specific entry requirements or knowledge such as medicine or veterinary science. In another announcement, the government is also going to support employers and people make use of all of the free options for training that are available to people in the UK. This would help them find skill gaps, get people into work and obviously grow the economy. This includes launching a new digital platform from Autumn, where people and employers can search for everything from apprenticeships and T-levels to skill boot camps and essential skill courses all in one place. Now, what this obviously means is that the UK is looking to tighten immigration and fill in open positions from the resident population in the UK by upskilling them, by training them, which also means that 
they might be looking at tightening immigration rules and making it more difficult for people to get visas from different countries to come work in the UK. Now, let's talk about how much the IHS and the visa fees are going to increase for people who want to apply for visas to come work in the UK and tourists. The immigration health surcharge, which people like you and I pay to access healthcare in the UK, is due to rise from £624 to £1,035 a year for each person. And this is effectively a 417% increase compared to five years ago. Wow. Now, the fee for international students and children will rise from £470 to £776 a year. This increase means a person coming for five years will face paying 5,175 in health fees alone. The visa fees will also rise by 15% for work and visit visas and at least 20% for study visas, certificates of sponsorship and leave to remain. Let's look at these numbers for a bit. What if you are coming to the UK on a skilled worker visa and the job is not on the shortage occupation list and you're applying for a visa for five years? Let's see how much it's going to cost you. Your visa fees will now be increased from 1,423 to £1,636. Your IHS will now be increased from £624 to £1,035 per year. So while earlier you had to pay 4,543 for one person, that's approximately 4.5 lakhs in INR, it will now cost you £6,811 per person or approximately 6.8 lakhs. The total cost for a family of four moving to the UK will be at least £33,000 before legal and relocation costs according to immigration experts. Now obviously as a consequence of this not only is it going to be a lot more expensive for you to apply for visas to come and work in the UK but experts also say it's going to drive up the cost of living. And if you're wondering how, let me explain. The companies that were hiring talent from outside the UK to come do jobs in the UK will now have to pay more in terms of COS and if they pay for visa fees, which then means they're going to pass on these expenses to the customer in the form of their products and services. So effectively, people who live in the UK are going to have to pay more for products and services because of all of these visa fees that have been hiked. So effect effectively, it is going to drive up the cost of living eventually. Now, while they haven't actually said when the visa fees will be actually increased, because if you look at the gov.uk website right now, it still shows you the earlier fees, I would urge you to reconsider if you really want to move to the UK. I mean, if the money is not a challenge for you, of course, by all means, there's absolutely no problem. The UK is a lovely place to be. But if you look at it, the costs that have increased are substantial. It's not a small amount of money, right? And the point is that despite paying so much for healthcare in the UK, there's still the fact that the healthcare system in the UK is struggling. Some appointments take weeks, some take months and some take years, despite paying so much as NHS fees. So do the math, do the research and try and figure out if the UK is the best option for you or not at this point. But if you aren't specific only to the UK and you are open to looking at other countries, why not look at Denmark? It's a lovely country which doesn't seem as opposed to the idea of immigrants as some other countries. And if you want to know anything more about moving to Denmark and which visas can get you there really quickly, I suggest you watch this.